Is it possible to quench a knife using dry ice? I've done a couple experiments in the recent past seeing if we can quench a knife in something that's super cold. I tried liquid nitrogen and then I tried liquid oxygen and both of those had pretty medium results. And I think I know why, and a lot of you did too. Many comments talked about how the liquid, whether it was the oxygen or the nitrogen, was boiling so fast, creating a vapor jacket around it that it wasn't really in contact with the liquid. Everyone who commented that, you're exactly right. So how do we stop that vapor jacket from forming? We use something that doesn't dissipate quite as quickly. Dry ice is a solid, and while it does turn into a gas, it's not as fast as a couple of those liquids. There's a second problem that we're hoping the dry ice will fix. When some steels are quenched, especially if they're getting too cold, they have a tendency to warp. The metal will actually contract unevenly on different parts of it, and that will bend the blade. Sometimes they'll use aluminum plates while blasting a knife with cool air to cool it off and keep it perfectly straight at the same time, and it works really well. So I'm hoping that if I smash the knife between two pieces of dry ice at once, that'll actually kind of work like those plates and help keep it straight, even though it's cooling down really fast. So what is red hot steel going to do to a piece of dry ice? That's really hot and that's really cold. Are we gonna see a battle of some kind? Is there gonna be a lot of vapor smoke? Let's do a quick test to find out. It didn't take too long for the metal to cool down, like it stopped being orange and then it stopped being red and then it started just being dark. We carved some good holes into the surface of the dry ice. And that's what I thought was gonna happen and that's why I wanted to make sure that I've got lots of surface area to quench the knife on. So that if I start putting in one spot and it sort of melts a hole, I can just scoot it over to the next spot and then the next spot and then the next spot and really make sure I've got a lot of good surface contact. This needs to be in my electric furnace for about 30 minutes at 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Ah! This is my dry ice plate knife smashing machine. I don't have a name for it yet. It's new. The idea is that I'll be able to hold two pieces of dry ice in here and then as it's set on a couple rails, I can smash the knife in it. Right in between the two plates of dry ice and cooling it down rapidly. This thing is working pretty well so far, but it's not quite ready. Dry ice is hard to hold on to, so what I need to do is add some spikes on the top and bottom where the dry ice will rest, and then these portions here can actually go up and down, so I can fit the dry ice in and then smoosh down onto it just a little bit with the spikes, tighten it in place, and hopefully that will hold my two blocks well enough that I'll be able to move in and out without them just falling to pieces or falling out, breaking in half, going wherever. Let's make those modifications. This is actually my test piece of dry ice, not my final. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. It at least holds it on enough. That's really, I don't need it to hold a piece of dry ice for hours. I need it to hold it for like a minute. And I think that'll do it. It's shaking a little bit, but that should be fine. Squish it back down. I've got some slightly bigger ones that I'm going to cut down to be a bigger, like it's gonna, it's gonna be longer and just really fill the space as much as possible so I've got as much knife squishing surface area as I could possibly get. I'm pretty sure every time I've done a video with dry ice, I've had comments asking where I get dry ice. And where I live, you can buy it at almost every grocery store. So if you can't do that where you live, I don't really have any advice for you. I'm not sure what the solution is.
of dry ice that presses together. The dry ice did not stay in place the whole time, but it stayed in place, I think, enough to get some good presses in. And then when it fell off, I was still able to squish it together, so that's okay. I think the blade is now cold, but the handle is still very hot. Yeah. yeah. Blade is definitely cool. Let's get that handle cooled down as well. Oh, that's a good sound. We have angered it. The knife has cooled down and I am happy to report it is quite straight, at least as straight as it was when it went into the kiln. So we're just gonna let it get to room temperature before we do a hardness test to see how well this actually worked. So see the impressions of the knife. There's the blade going down there. Oh, here's one of the handle. You can see the ring from the handle. Couple going the other direction from when I turned it. And that's why I was moving it, because I knew if I held it in one spot, it would just sublimate away the dry ice and I'd just be getting that vapor jacket again. This right here is my fancy machine that tests how hard metal is in what's called the Rockwell Scale C, so the HRC. And if we get a good proper heat treatment on it, we should be looking at something around 60. Yeah, we apply some pressure. Something in the machine is moving weights around and cantilevering. You can see this needle going somewhere. And in my experience, the fact that the needle made it all the way back to here is not a great sign. But now we're going to apply even more pressure and see the machine's gonna measure the difference and tell us our hardness. <laughs> 30 died. Oh, well, that is not a great level. Let's try this again. Sometimes different spots are a little bit different. Oh, and this time we got up to about 42. about let's do one more to double check oh 48 ish yeah about 47 48 unheat treated this knife was about a four a five it's really off the scale too soft a really good heat treatment on it would have gotten it up to maybe 62 63 somewhere in that range so this did harden it did get harder than it was before so in that respect we have successfully heat treated the knife however it's not a great hardening job, which probably means that surprisingly, even surrounded by dry ice, it cooled down too slowly. Dry ice is super, super cold, but apparently it doesn't do a very quick job of pulling heat out of steel. Kind of a shock. And I will say that while dry ice didn't really harden the knife as much as we would want to be fully functional, it did by far the best job of keeping the blade straight at the same time. So maybe we're moving in a good direction. This knife design is actually based on some polls that I did on Instagram and people really seem to like it. So I've made, well, not just one. We've got some cool plans with this and if you wanna see what they are, make sure you're subscribed.